This is session BK16401, uh, enhancing OD application performance with ODP. Uh, once again, for those who are expecting the Molly presentation, um, that was moved uh, to, there was a scheduling conflict and that the Molly presentation is being held in M23-M4. So if you're looking for that, you're not in the right room. Uh, if you are looking for this, then you are in the right room. Uh, so what, we, what we're doing today is, um, as you know, we've got a series of demonstrations uh, that are planned for this afternoon in the uh, LNG hacking room, which is Lotus 5. So we hope you'll, uh, we'll be able to see folks there this afternoon. But what we wanted to do uh, today is uh, share experiences over the last uh, several months uh, using ODP, both in terms of application por uh, porting uh, and uh, performance tuning and offer design advice to application writers uh, in the form of do's and don'ts and pitfalls to watch for. And we'd really like this to be sort of an interactive Q&A type uh, roundtable. Uh, so we'd encourage people to sit a little closer to the mics if possible um, so that we can pick it up. This room's a little large. We've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, folks up here. I think there's some other folks who are still expecting. Um, I'm Bill Fischoffer, um, and uh, Christian, is, is he in the room yet? Okay. And we've got, uh, we've got uh, Krishna here, we've got Barry here, uh, Depang and Weishan, are you, did you, did you want to uh, uh, come up here for, uh, for, for talking, or at least one of you? So that we can have um, a thing. And so what we really wanted to do just today was really cover a couple of topics of, of interest uh, based on the uh, experiences we've had with, with porting and working with a number of applications, non-trivial applications running on ODP. And so uh, without further ado, I think we'd like to start with uh, talking a little bit about uh, NGINX. Uh, let's get the... Uh, Uh, yeah, the, so in ODP, we try to uh, port some web server application to um, to run it in the ODP context. So the, we took the NGINX web server for that for that purpose. Uh, and I think many of you know uh, this web server. I mean, it's a, a lightweight web server, and it's a, it's also a, it's a open source. And uh, it has the concept of uh, using worker processes to handle uh, multiple connections uh, in parallel. So, and usually the number of uh, worker processes will usually be the uh, number of cores on the hardware. Uh, and it's, it also supports, uh, I mean, it handles the connections using this multiplexing, uh, new connections, and uh, serves the content in parallel. Uh, and uh, it also supports a uh, very rich set of features, very uh, many features, and also performance tuning options. You can tune the performance by uh, updating, uh, updating the NGINX uh, config file. Um, so, you, I mean, if you run it with the default config, you might see the uh, basic performance. So, but you, if you update the NGINX uh, feature, the, uh, the configuration, then you will see different pe performance numbers. So. That's why I just mentioned that. Because, uh, can you go to the next slide? Uh, uh, so what we did uh, in ODP to port the NGNX. So now we we use the uh, we ported the NGNX to the ODP context by using the OFP uh, project, uh, which is a user space uh, TCP/IP stack. And we, in the NGNX, we added a module called NGNX uh, OFP module, which, which, which gets initialized uh, in the initial stage. And we, all, we replaced all the system calls, I mean, in the Linux system calls with the OFP uh, system calls. And, 
So we have, and then we, we have like a two options uh, to port. One is using the uh, OFP event mechanism, and another one is a normal uh, select mechanism. So we have like multiple options. So we tried both. Um, and ma mainly we use the standard select mechanism and the event mechanism, the event notification mechanism, we use it as an option and we plan to work more on this also in further future. future. Uh, and uh, we have this ODP schedule inside the NGNX uh, core worker process. So e each worker process is uh, running ODP schedule uh, for the run to completion of tasks. And uh, yeah, the, it's about the, this one is about the, uh, the challenges we face during the port, porting of uh, this web, web server into ODP. Uh, and yeah, difficult to understand. Yeah, this one, yeah, of course, the NGNX is a really, I mean, it's a big architecture. And it was initially, it, was, it took some time to understand and try to port it uh, into the ODP to, so that it runs in ODP context. So they don't get in, into the, uh, into the same, uh, some, some conflict of uh, running these tasks in parallel. So that, that was one of the uh, challenges we had. And, uh, and we had, as I mentioned before, we had like, uh, multiple solutions. One is one, the event mechanism from OFP and also the select mechanism. Uh, and so we have to run multi several scenarios and understand the performance of each option. Uh, and I think we, we, we need to work more in this one. I think we believe we have like a, we can tune uh, the performance of NGNX with uh, different mechanisms provided from ODP and OFP. Uh, so, and then we, um, yeah, this multiple team, uh, it's like we, we from ODP and working together with the uh, OFP uh, project. So we have like multiple teams and people working on mm -hmm. this. Uh, project. So a uh, quick question then, um, can you characterize the amount of change that was required? I mean obviously one of the challenges was just understanding a large existing code base, uh, but uh, in terms of the amount, uh, you know, the degree of change that was required in order to adapt to this, can you, can you comment on, uh, on that in terms of the size of the changes or the scope of them? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, Actually, we, uh, it's not uh, that big uh, uh, effect in the end. I mean, we, we had to initialize uh, some, oh, as I mentioned, some module, NGNX OFP module to, uh, so we have to um, make, I mean, replace all the system calls with OFP calls, uh, OFP system calls. For that, we needed some uh, integration work to do. But uh, NGNX has uh, some uh, uh, feature that we can, uh, add some module, uh, plug into it, and so that it, it gets uh, replaced by the uh, whatever feature you want to add, you can enable that <coughs> feature instead of the others. <coughs> so that we, we did that one. That took a little while uh, to figure out uh, how to run this ODP, con ODP context. Uh, that took a little while. And, and also the next thing is, uh, uh, this is only the, uh, the basic uh, uh, part we had in the beginning, and then we figured out that it's not actually completely running in the ODP context because it's uh, we couldn't able to run multiple processes in parallel. We could only in the beginning we could we can only run only one process in the ODP context, and if we try to spawn more, then we we got into some trouble. So then we figured out that uh, okay, then we had to go into this NGNX core module. And we we tried to uh, modify some changes there, so that the all the processes that get spawned is from the OFP context, ODP context. So, so and then we think we, I mean it can be modified more, mo more and more, and optimize it more and more, and uh, we can make it more better. So, it's uh, simple to understand, of course. We have the, uh, I can show you the where the code exists, so you can go through it. With, with uh, the OEP implementation, which, uh, what, what do you use? Is it generic? Oh, yeah. That, 
Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, we use the uh, Linux generic as a test. From, yeah, from the yeah, database. So we have plans to. I, I had the slide. Um, the one of the points that we plan to do it in OD, DPDK context also, ODP DPDK also in few. After, may probably for the next connect. Another question. Do you, do you actually have it so that you're so you talk about? Um, is it basically running one worker thread, uh, you know, from an ODP point of view, one ODP worker thread per Linux process? Uh, uh, um, yes, uh, but now, now we made it working for uh, uh, multiple processes can run on the each core for, uh, for one process. So, um, you, you, so you, you, you do affinity, so multiple processes are running on, on the same core, but there's only one thread per process? Uh, no, actually, we have a, we have the affinity, and then the, all the worker processes can run on the multiple <coughs> CPU cores. Great. Um, were there any uh, questions from the audience on this? Uh, hi, Krishna. One question. So. <coughs> Basically, Nginx uh, interacts only with OFP or how much interaction Nginx has with ODP? So if I understand, OD OFP is built on top of ODP. So Nginx is built on top of OFP. So how much of the interaction Nginx does directly with ODP? Uh, we, it's not much actually. It's mainly through OFP only. Mainly. But in the initial, uh, but the initi initiation part, we have to initialize some, uh, initialize these processes from the ODP. That's the only part we mainly did. The rest is through OFP only. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So, did you, you, so have um, you just mentioned that uh, you're going to try to run it over ODP, over ODP DPDK. Yes. Yeah, in our demo on ARMv8, we run it in a VM. Nginx OFP ODP DPDK in the VM works. I mean. We were showing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we we could. I mean, we mainly focused on getting this, uh, get, getting to the st uh, stable stage. So th this is what we focused mainly. Uh, okay, uh, this is about this uh, performance numbers. I'm trying, I'm trying to put this one. So uh, this uh, you, you can you can see native versus our ported uh, NGNX numbers on different worker processes uh, on the uh, with, the, with with multiple worker processes but this is this is running on linux generic right? yeah yes that's correct yes, yeah so all all are uh, linux generic there is there is no no uh, dpdk yet ODP dpdk yet. Uh, the uh, the no, uh, I think the standard uh, uh, packet we have. Yes. Is this a limitation of OFP? I mean, by default, OFP just uses the common protocol. Or yeah, I mean, uh, we haven't. Uh, I mean, uh, we have to see. We have to go through it. We we together with OFP thing. Uh, there are some updates. We we got it from OFP. So then we see we see much more performance increase or increase, and then we believe we, we also need something from ODP also like uh, we, the next step would be like a try to do with the multi uh, multi queue support that we believe it might uh, show better performance. Uh, now we are using this ODP schedule plain ODP schedule, uh, so it it might be from both sides. I mean it's not only from OFP or not only from ODP. So we we are we are working on that one. Yeah, what is the schedule? Yes, that's correct. Uh, okay, then, yeah, this is the future work we are tr I'm talking about. This, the, so, for, so the next step would be try to run it on ODP DPDK with the uh, multi queue support. And the and we want to do some optimization and profiling to see where the, the performance is uh, hitting. Uh, and then we, I mean, we also try to polish, I mean, our patches, we have some patches. Um, then we, we have to uh, do some more uh, work on these patches and try to make it uh, more uh, uh, better, look nice. Uh, 
and we try to upstream this work to the NGINX project. That's also the, uh, one of the tasks we have. So, and then, yeah, this, uh, so the Git repo, the, this is my private Git repo. This is where we try, uh, I'm trying to test the uh, OFP NGINX in uh, at, at LNG. So if someone one wants to test it, so they can take it from here. So. I have, I have a question just uh, regarding the upstreaming. Do you have any feedback from the guys uh, upstream? Do they have interest? It's, uh, uh, I, I, I think we haven't, uh, as far as I know, we haven't contacted them. The, the, we, we just uh, started this like uh, three, four months ago. So we haven't, I think we will soon maybe. Well, I think one of the uh, one of the factors also was, uh, as a result, of this work was also helping to tune OFP. Correct. Yes, that's all. That's okay. also true. So um, this was really not not just a an exercise in porting a non-trivial application to ODP, but also the one of the first large-scale exercises using Open FastPath. Yeah, actually. that's correct. So, yes, yes. We so there, there there also is a question of tuning Open FastPath as well on this. So. Uh, work in progress, but I think a promising start. Yes, yes, that's good because we've been uh, finding, I mean, some more uh, performance tuning from OFP also. So they are delivering uh, constantly uh, the patches uh, based on this NGNX uh, working actually. So we find when we find some issues, then we speak to OFP, and then they they see if it, if it is something from OFP, then they are delivering all these um, uh, changes to the OFP directly. So it's, uh, OFP, OFP is always getting upstream. I mean, all the changes uh, getting upstreamed in the OFP. So uh, the patches here, it's only on the NGNX part. You, only, you, you will only see the NGNX patches here. All the other patches that gets upstream to the OFP. Great. So um, uh, Depeng uh, is also then going to talk about uh, uh, experience with working with the T-Rex uh, traffic generator. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, first of all, uh, Wenxia and I are from Cisco, and uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to say thank you to the parent, our parent company and RNG to give us the chance to working on the interesting project. Uh, so uh, let me give you a short br brief uh, introduction to the T-Rex. T-Rex is a open source traffic generator uh, created by several Cisco engineers and uh, my colleague, uh, my colleague Wen Xian is one of the uh, initiator of this uh, project. So first of all, uh, originally the T-Rex is based on the DPDK. It can generate a uh, level four, uh, L four to seven stateful traffic by replaying the uh, pickup file in a smart way. Uh, bundled with uh, T-Rex, you can find many pickup files which is captured in the realistic production network. So we call it a realistic uh, traffic generator. Uh, the, perf the performance of the original T-Rex is uh, uh, impressive. It can scale to 200 gigabyte uh, BPS uh, we, uh, working, uh, running on our Cisco server UCS. Uh, in Cisco, in, uh, we use this traffic generator to test our uh, stateful features like uh, uh, DPI and uh, performance uh, routing. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so when and my, uh, my work is port uh, T-Rex over ODP. Uh, I think the benefit of porting T-Rex ODP include the uh, can, uh, uh, we, we can not, uh, original T-Rex need the DPDK compatible hardware. Uh, one, after we port the T-Rex to ODP, we can use the T-Rex with some interface uh, which is not compa compatible uh, of, uh, with DPDK. For example, in our demo in the, this afternoon, we connect the T-Rex and uh, the, our, uh, the Cisco software router, CSR 1000 way. Um, 
the interface of the CSR is uh, actually the type interface, uh, the Wnet interface. A original T-Rex cannot work with such kind of interface, which is not compatible with uh, DBDK. After the porting, we, uh, the, the DB, ODP T-Rex can work with such kind of interface. And meanwhile, if linked with the uh, ODP DBDK uh, SO, the T-Rex ODP can still benefit from the DBDK performance boost. Uh, during the porting, we actually we summarized some tricks about the porting. Mm. Uh, first of all, the in in the original uh, T-Rex, uh, it used uh, RTEM buff as a representation of the packet, but in ODP, the packet is represented by the ODP packet. Uh, actually. These two objects is not is different in the semantics, so we cannot directly uh, replace the MBUF to the uh, ODP packet. It it creates some difficulties during the porting. So we adopt a, a way uh, the, the mentioned in the option two. Actually, we implement our own MBUF and uh, related methods based on the ODP buffer and the ODP packet, and we convert the and buff to the ODP packet at the last moment, which is before the ODP packet I/O sign. In this way, uh, our porting work become much more easier because we don't need to find many places in the T-Rex code uh, manip manipulating the unbuff. Uh, we, we <coughs> the main part of the T-Rex code can remain unchanged in this way. And uh, and. Yes, exactly. The performance uh, memory copy introduces a uh, noticeable uh, performance drop. We will come to this topic in the later slides. Okay, in the original, uh, in the native DPDK, it can expose the hardware offload capability to, to, to the application, but we, we don't find any uh, similar uh, function in the ODP API. So we have to disable this kind of, uh, uh, this part of uh, functionality. For example, in the uh, original T-Rex, you can send the, uh, a flag and a VLAN ID in the MBUF. So when the, in, uh, the NIC sends the packet, it will help the application to tag the VLAN ID. So we have to dis discard this part of functionality for the time being. And uh, oh, there are some feed, feed, feedbacks from us uh, to the OP API. First of all, we'd like uh, to see a new API to uh, combine multiple ODP packets to form a single packet. Uh, so I, I want to use an example to explain why this is useful. Uh, first of all, uh, you can see that packet A is made of uh, Header, a small header, and uh, uh, following by a, followed by a large part, and the packet B is made of uh, another small header, a different small header, and followed by the same, uh, 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 followed by a si the same large part. So, actually, in in the T-Rex, when we construct the packet, we, we we just need to change some fields in the header. We don't need to. Uh, change anything in the uh, payload. Uh, that, that's why, so in the original T-Rex, uh, we can just create, uh, allocate the different header, but uh, the, uh, all the packets share the common uh, payload. It, it makes the packet uh, duplicate uh, much faster. Yes. Uh, another example, some other example, uh, that may benefit from the capability include the fragment and the reassembly and the multicast replication. Uh, the second feedback from us is we'd like to see the NUMA support because in the DBDK API, when you create a memory pool, you can pass a socket ID as an argument. But in the ODP 
API, uh, we don't have similar support. I think uh, Bill has hold some discussion session about this kind of support. Yeah, I mean, this, this was one of the, we'll be talking about this, in fact, in the next session where we recap uh, all of the uh, uh, deep dive discussions that we held this week. And um, uh, certainly, both of these areas are things that we are addressing in uh, ODP Monarch and more fully in uh, ODP Tiger Moth uh, later this year. So, uh, but this, this, this was exactly the sort of test bed we needed to prove out the requirements for these as well as to enable us to test the, uh, the patches that are currently being circulated and, and will be uh, circulating uh, as we add these additional features. So that really shows the benefit of these type of ports uh, in order to be able to help uh, guide uh, the tuning of the underlying system. So a quick question. I understand totally why the first one makes a big performance difference, being able to have a template and common part. That's huge for traffic generators. It's not so clear to me. I don't quite understand why the, the memory pool DPK feature in a XA6 environment is going to give you that much performance benefit. It's not, I guess I'm a little confused. Where did the performance benefit come from from that? Um, you, you mean the new muscle right? Yeah. Okay. Where did the performance Yes, uh, actually the performance difference is yet to be evaluated, but uh, some original test to the original T-Rex shows that if you connect uh, the different NIC to different socket and you create the um, packet buffer on the corresponding uh, memory node, it will increase the performance drastically. So this is basically not a um, multi-core Intel, this is a multi-socket yes. Intel, that, and so you're, that's why, you, okay, I understand. So these aren't single single socket Intels. Yes, yes exactly. Okay, uh, there are a few other feedbacks. Uh, let, let me go through it quickly. First of all, we, we'd, like to, uh, we'd like to see an uh, API that we can uh, program the NIC with a white list to filter some, uh, to, to filter based on the MAC address because we don't want to see any packet uh, which uh, we are not interested in. And uh, also work around in the current ODP T-Rex, we just set the NIC as uh, the promiscuous mode. And uh, we, we'd like to uh, see API to make the ODP monopolize the NIC. And um, another support is the packet, uh, we want to, uh, uh, we want to manipulate the NIC in, in a diverse uh, way not only the up-down status. And another one is uh, in, the, in the original T-Rex, uh, in, the, in the DPDK, uh, it, it can give you a structure abstracted, abstracting the, the hardware, and you can find some uh, register addresses in the structure. Then the application can directly interact with the uh, NIC, like read the register for some statistics and so on but we don't have the similar stuff in the ODP API. And the last one is uh, we'd like to uh, read the free buffer number, a number of free uh, buffer in the memory pool is uh, use, useful for troubleshooting. And the next, next uh, uh, few slides talk about the performance evaluation and the profiling. We identify some hot spots, hot spots in, the, uh, in the application. So um, please let me Allow our allow my colleague Wen Xian to introduce this part. Thank you. Okay, and after putting the T Rex to ODP, we did some quick test of the performance. And here's our some test test consideration. Firstly, we disable the uh, X traffic. The reason we disable X traffic is that uh, the, in the native T-Rex, it leverages some hardware, hardware functionality to accelerate some, some kind of classification, and, uh, which is not supported in the uh, ODP DBTK. And uh, after, as we disable the X traffic, so we, some fun functionality of T-Rex might be disabled too. For example, so the net support 
uh, calculate the RTT, some kind of this feature. But but I think we can also we can still evaluate some performance even we disable the uh, X traffic. Uh, another another consideration is that we use only one worker thread to generate the traffic. The reason we use only one thread is that uh, original T-Rex leverage the new mass support and uh, we don't have that. And another thing is that uh, uh, original T-Rex used multiple TX queues and uh, when we are doing the, the porting, uh, we use ODP 1.6, which has no multiple TXQ queue support. And uh, the traffic profile we used is the SFR profile, which is a realistic profile in some te uh, provided by uh, some tele a telecom company from France. And in this traffic profile, many applications are, are combined in the traffic. And uh, we show the uh, traffic throughput in uh, Cisco routers, which is connect to the T-Rex back to back. Uh, the reason we used router to show the counter is that uh, we found the ODP packet IO stats retained, seems the value retained by the uh, packet IO stats is not uh, expected. Uh, we are still under investigation whether there's some issue in the ODP or in our code. So here's the, some quick test results. Uh, the first column is the native DBK performance. We can see that when we use, when we use only one, uh, one thread to generate the traffic, it can achieve more about, um, about 5.7 5 GBPS throughput. And uh, when we use the Linux generic, it, it's less than one GBPS. And then we turn to the Linux uh, DBDK. It's about 2.2, uh, which is about 60% performance drop. And uh, after, we, after some performance analysis, we identified one of the hotspots is the, about the time clock API, which is the system call in Linux generic, and has not been optimized in the ODB DBDK. And after we op op optimize the time clock API with the DBDK API, then it, the performance is improved back about uh, more than 10%. So here, here is some analysis of, we use the perf tool to analysis the hotspot of the, of the uh, after our porting. And basically, we found there are two, to hotspot, which is which impacts, impacts the performance a lot. One, the first, the first one is the memory copy, and uh, then I think that most of the memory copy are introduced because we in, we introduced a new uh, extra layer of the ODB pa ODB packet, and uh, as as Stephen has mentioned, that we need some new API to support to eliminate the the copy. And uh, another hotspot is, uh, is about the time, the time clock. So I think if we can, we can optimize these two parts, the performance of the T-Rex over ODB DBDK, the performance will be improved much better. So a couple of questions here. Um, uh, obviously, one of the sources of overhead uh, here is the fact that you're, you've got an application which is natively using the uh, MBUF structure uh, within DPDK and trying to separate that from uh, direct manipulation of the of the MBUF structs. Um, so that is introducing uh, introducing a lot of overhead. Um, do, were you able to do any sort of preliminary analysis of what would it take to change the uh, the code to not be directly manipulating MBUFs? But instead, use use the ODP uh, packet structures natively, uh, and then take advantage of the fact that in in ODP DBDK, for instance, it really is just MBUFs under the covers. It's just that it's not explicitly exposed to the application as such. 
Yeah, uh, actually, we are trying in our next study to try to uh, eliminate the, some additional medical PIP. But uh, the first thing we met is that, as we mentioned in the OP, API, we, we suggest to add is uh, we need to add some API to, uh, to, con con uh, to make the packet representation as two part, one is the different header and the common part. Uh, right, if, right, if yeah. We have that, API, I think we can evaluate, change some code and evaluate the difference. Right, that, I mean, that is one of the things that we, we are adding, uh, yeah. you know, as, as a result of this work as well as others. Um, that's, so that's good. So we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get a, a much better view of that by yeah, the time yeah. we get to uh, uh, the next connect. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that uh, you know, stands out on this particular chart is the fact that um, you, uh, it looks like you had one column, the last one, which, in which there's actually quite a bit of uh, uh, overhead drop. I don't know if you could comment on that. Uh, the uh, XGB, X, uh, transmit packet, the column. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, actually, we have no, we, 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 so far we have no detailed analysis of this column. I think it's, it's interesting. In the native DBTK, uh, it used the XMIT package API to transmit the packet. And this API occupies uh, almost 20% uh, of the, the CPU cycle. But uh, in our TRS ODB DBDK, we uh, it used another DBDK API to transmit the packet. And use only, uh, I think one possibility might be the difference of the DBDK version. Uh, in original TRX, it used DBDK 1.7. <laughs> Uh, 1.8, and uh, in ODB DBDK use uh, ODB DBDK 2.2. That, that would be one possibility. Well, I mean, our, th this this particular call uh, presumably is being done by ODP DBDK rather than by the application. Um, oh, sorry. So, so the question is, who is uh, this? This is this is an area. Th these these calls. Um, in in the case of of the uh, the latter one where you're running yeah. on ODP. Uh, presumably that's being done by ODP DPDK, not by T-Rex itself. Yeah, it's, 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 it's by ODP DPDK. So it's the way that um, the packet output was implemented in ODP DPDK, yes. which would, yes. and, and possibly some changes to the underlying DPDK yeah. level. Yes. So, okay. So the, uh, to prevent the, the, the memory copies, let's say you stick with the inbuff to the very end and then convert to uh, ODP packets. Theoretically, you should be able to do that with just retaking the uh, ODP, uh, the MBUF uh, metadata, the structure around it, and copying that into the equivalent <coughs> data structures and leaving the buffers alone. You shouldn't need to do a mem copy of the actual data buffers, I don't think. Um, maybe that requires a small change in the next year, but uh, I, I know I something like that. Yeah, so, so after we have that API, then we can do this change. I think it's not big. Yeah, I think we can skip this last. Okay, so some our feature work. I think the first feature work might be that we need to add some support after we introduce the new API, like the multi, multiple TXQ support, and uh, like we can let, uh, we can eliminate the additional memory copy, and we can make some optimization of the time clock. And, uh, and then we would like to evaluate some performance difference between the OTP packet mode and the OTP schedule mode. And currently we use the packet mode. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Oh, I, have uh, I have a question. Um, so, so this is freely available, this T-Rex -T code now? People like, you know, we could, I could get it and try to use it in my code, my, my systems. So the first question I want to know is, because um, I built, you know, these traffic tenders before, and one of the questions for the TCP traffic tender is, are you actually implementing um, stateful uh, sequence number processing and, and retransmission of your PCAPs in, if you see some, uh, the acts don't come back or something? working on the T-Rex for TCP support. And uh, in existing T-Rex, uh, we do not maintain the full stack, full protocol stack. We just some kind of uh, smart replay. We, uh, we uh, 
generate one, one flow and assign a flow tuple for this flow, and then we simply replay the packet from the packet file. So that we, uh, So there's no, there's no replay. But in, in for, for right now, it sounds like all this testing was UDP based? Uh, no, no. Uh, then the, pa the packet generator here is, is not for fully, does not support fully TCP stack. Uh, what we do is that we capture the packet file in the middle. Uh, uh, then we use some some uh, realistic traffic, traffic and simulate some delay in the middle. So we capture the packet in the middle as the packet file. Then we replay the packet file and assume the delay we simulate is enough for the packet to reach the, the, the other side. But uh, let's say if some packet drop here, in the some packet drop happens, we do not have the, uh, yeah, the transmit, yeah. There's some trade-off between performance and the functionality. And as the user of the traffic generator, in most cases, we only need such a, prop such a functionality. Presumably when you do your PCAP replays, you can change the TCP sure, uh, sequence numbers and port numbers and stuff like that, so you yeah. can replay them on multiple sessions and stuff? Yeah, okay. yes. Okay, thank you. And well, both, uh, both NGINX as well as T-Rex will be demonstrated uh, this afternoon in uh, Lotus 5, so uh, any additional questions and, and seeing things and looking, talking about futures, we can uh, uh, cover them this afternoon. Um, Christian, do you have anything on the, uh, on, on here? Not really. I guess I should okay. Okay. Um, Barry, did you, you've you've also had some uh, experience with with working with uh, with ODP applications? Did you have any uh, any comments or observations uh, on you know the pros and cons and what are the challenges and, and you know tips for for doing that? Um, yeah, sure, a few. I, I, some of this stuff is actually goes back to our September uh, Lin Connect uh, Linear Connect days where uh, we had actually I'd done some work on. Porting it to um, the Tile GX platform, ODP, and we were able to see very, very, th you know, thin overhead, very, uh, pretty much the, the performance that the only hardware could give us. Uh, and of course, I tried a couple of different apps. The uh, the easiest one is the L240 example, and um, um, which actually was interesting because it actually had both um, schedule mode and the, the more direct modes, and uh, the performance wasn't as different there as I thought. That was probably one surprise. Uh, but then it wasn't a very complicated app. Mm -hmm. The other app that we uh, experimented with was uh, uh, OVS. And um, uh, there, it, it's such a more complicated application that it was much harder for us to get a sense of, yeah, we get working, but, you know, we, didn't, we couldn't, you know, it just took too long for us to really compare apples to apples in different scenarios. Though what we did discover was that the, um, there was a lot of overhead having to get to what they call this EMC cache there and it wasn't that particularly well done. So, you know, an OVS code that we had, and I, you know, I wanted to, but I never did go and fix that. But otherwise, from an ODP point of view, that wasn't the bottleneck that we were seeing. Right. So you you I, you you were also working on a platform that had quite a bit of hardware acceleration capabilities built in. Yes. So I guess the question is then twofold: from an application standpoint, how what how easy was it to for the applications to take advantage of those uh, accelerators without having to do special coding. And then from an implementer standpoint, how easy or, or challenging was it to map the ODP APIs to take advantage of those uh, uh, accelerators under the covers? Right, so that's the, the Tile MX I think you're talking yeah. about, which um, had 100 ARM cores. Um, so that's still in process. It's been unfortunately slowed down a little bit because they, my new company has other things they want us to focus on first. but. Um, from what I saw, the, the, to be honest, I really don't have any good feedback on the app part of it, more on the implementation part of it, because you know that has to come first. You can't really do that. And in the implementation part of it, um, we, I, we, we didn't get all the accelerators in there before we had to cut, we, we started working on something else. But what the ones we saw, it looked fairly straightforward, but um, I, we didn't get to a point where we could actually say, oh, it's, in, it's now production running test. The second step, which is how easy for the apps to run, use it, we don't, I don't have any feedback. We don't okay. do that. 
obviously Sorry. depends a lot on, on the assumptions the app has to right. start with. Uh, any uh, any general questions for uh, for anyone <coughs> who's uh, who's you know been talking here? Don't all speak at once. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for uh, for for attending here. We have uh, oh. to know when we uh, do the accelerate, uh, whether we can consider the power consumption about the DPTQ. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite capture the, uh, that, that question. There was, so it's a question on acceleration? Uh, from when we, when we uh, accelerate DPTQ, okay, whether we consider power consumption from another respect to consider the DBDK, yeah. So how, how would we accelerate DBDK? Is that the, the question? <laughs> or? No, DBDK has, has to take care of power management itself. Right? Oh, power management. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, if takes care of that. Right. I, I, again, the, the, uh, uh, that, that's really a function of the, uh, of the underlying implementation. Uh, so, for instance, um, if you have an application that is doing a, uh, and using the event model for ODP and use just calling ODP schedule, uh, well, if there's no work to be done, then it's the implementation's option to enter a low power mode until uh, work is available to, uh, to run. Yeah, one way to the DVDK, the data movement from the piece by through the PCIe, and uh, this is of cheap access, so they must uh, consume lots of power. Right, right. Yeah, uh, data movement dominates cheap power, mm -hmm. not only computing. Right. It's very small, 100 times about. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, yeah. I mean, I, that, that is one of the issues that uh, applications have in general, which is the more they are tuned to a specific platform, either by design or happenstance, um, then there's a question of, of sort of detuning them from a specific implementation and, and using more uh, generic structures which are going to then allow them to adapt to other, other environments uh, without effort. So in many ways, it's, it's, it's common for you know, some applications to be highly tuned to a specific environment and then untuning them from that so that they can actually run better on, on different platforms uh, can be a bit of a challenge. And yeah, power features are one of, one of those areas where that tends to be very platform specific. Uh, and so it's one of the reasons why in ODP we, we, we leave that up to the implementations rather than the applications to be power aware uh, because that ties them to a very specific platform. So maybe a very, maybe there is some specific case bill where some applications should say, for example, I want to go to power safe mode now or top speed now, and mm -hmm. uh, if if there is requirements from application, please uh, send these requirements to mailing list and the use case. And probably we will discuss that in article. <coughs> Understanding, we, we find uh, power efficient is more important than the throughput. Yeah. So, be, yeah, because of power, power dominates data center. Movement, data movement dominates power. Yeah. And also remind remind me of something. But one tip that I, I would recommend for both implementers and uh, users that w that we've always found to be very powerful, which is the use of uh, huge pages, which um, you know really does make can make a difference in on almost all the platforms. Of course, the one frustrating part is of course ARM and um, 
uh, Intel and, and Tau GX all have different huge page sizes, but still, you know, that's, that's one thing I, I strongly recommend considering. All right, well, that takes us to the end of the hour. Um, the next, uh, there's a break right now, and uh, at 11.15, we'll be continuing with the next session, which is the LNG uh, futures uh, consideration, which is a summary of all of the discussions that we've had this week. So uh, for those, we may see some of you back here for that. Until then, enjoy your break. Thanks. Thank you.